Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number four of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we've moved the Arizona Coyotes out of the States and back up north to Quebec. Last episode, we went through and we simulated about half of the season. Just under that, we're about 25 games in, so more of a quarter of the way through the season. But the Nordiques are not doing fantastic with a 12-9-3 record, 27 points in 24 games, and currently sit in a wild card spot in the Atlantic. Apart from that, well, we had some comments to get to, so let's get into this. Uh, first comment here came from... Duke Storm saying, I think you should be able to give some of your X-Factor players, or some of your players X-Factors that are deserving of it, like Clayton Keller, Phil Kessel, and more. Um, Mr. Waternews said, yeah, it's crazy that you can edit X-Factors, so that's something we'll probably be focusing on a bit more in this episode as well. Uh, Mike Bierman also said, Phil should definitely have some shooting abilities for sure. I totally agree with that. Um... Mark Leframbois said, I've noticed the no-name slash number glitch on the jerseys too. My Nordiques franchise mode and my third jersey is affected. I sure hope that they fix it. So yeah, it'd be nice to see if they can actually fix the uh, jersey issues or not. But um, today we're going to be going in adding some extra um, X-Factors to players that are deserving of it. And then we're going to be going and uh, getting through the majority of the season here today. So... Um, I did notice when I was going through the lines that X-Factors are starting to show up more and more um, the more you play through this. So, you know, a guy like Phil Kessel is nothing. We added a bunch of X-Factors to Barrett Hayden, like 1T quick draw, quick pick, and yoink, um, considering he's a two-way forward, and it was noticeable. Right away, um, you could actually see it affecting. I mean, it didn't happen right away because last episode it wasn't showing up, but... I'm hoping the gameplay is actually kind of fixed now. So, um, yeah, when we go and look at the lines here, obviously we can see a guy like Thorson's got magnetic on, but um, Barrett Hayton is now showing off 1T as his uh, his superstar or his X Factor line contributor. So that's good to see, um, and that carries through. Like on the power play, he's got 1T. Same with on the four man, I believe. Uh, maybe not on the four-man, but um, he was also showing off he quick, quick pick, not yoink. Um, he was showing off quick pick on the PK, which has bumped it up to a plus three, which is really good to see. And same with the uh, three-man PK, that's also showing there. So I would say the other guys that probably should have some X-Factors would consist of um, Phil Kessel, definitely, who is one of the names on there. Um, we already gave Clayton Keller a couple, and... I don't think it's really made an impact yet, but it is showing up now in the lines, which is good. And I think another guy who is probably worthy of some X factors would be Jesse Pulleyarvi, and maybe um, maybe a guy like Victor Soderstrom as well. I think he's a pretty decent defenseman that we're going to hold on to for a long time. So yeah, let's uh, let's get in and edit some X factors here. So Phil Kessel is going to be up first, and uh, Phil the Thrill. There is no doubt in my mind that he, um, he's he got a couple different... I don't know if he's got um, a zone ability necessarily, but I would say um, he would probably have make it snappy. His snapshot and wrist shots are both just insane. Um, I'd say he has wheels. He goes around guys too. So that one, maybe snipe or snipe. And... I want to say close quarters. Yeah, I think those are all Phil Kessel kind of traits. I think that makes sense. So we'll save that for him. Um, for a guy like Jesse Pugliarvi, I think he's going to have more so like big rig. Um, I think he will have snipe as well as he's a sniper. Um, or I guess he's a power forward, but um, that would be another one that makes sense so we'll give him big rig for sure um actually i think crease crasher is another one that we would see him have and then snipe as well so um i think that's good for pulley he's gonna 
PP deserves some X factors, I would say. And then a guy like Soderstrom, who is playing in our top four, I would say, you know, he's not super crazy as far as what he does in game, but he's just really solid all around as a defenseman. And I think to kind of represent that, I think um, I want to give him shutdown, but I don't know if that's the exact one that we're looking for. I know shutdown is just an insanely good ability. Um, I think Yoink would be a decent one. I don't think he's... I don't think true silence is really his trait. So let's do shutdown, Yoink, and quick pick. Um, it's just going to make him a really solid defenseman. And then maybe... Maybe tape to tape as well. It's the only other one I can think that's going to be somewhat accurate. He does send pretty good passes. Um, so yeah, let's do tape to tape. And I think that's solid for Soderstrom. I think that'll make him a lot more noticeable and impactful in game. And I don't know if anybody else really is deserving of um, some X factors. I mean, obviously, guys like Shane Wright and Ricard Thorson are going to be insanely good, um, you know, as we continue to advance through this franchise mode. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of guys, apart from like, you know, Jerasek's going to be good. He's got 19 points in 22 games in the minors. That's crazy. Um, he's going to be good as he's got some zone abilities. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do for zone abilities. And now we're going to get through some calendar simulation and um well we'll see how well the nordiques can do here moving into the next months of december january and february and well it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see how they perform because they're not sitting in the most spectacular spot right now and our next game that we're going to feature is probably going to be against Ottawa in January. Um, after that, we'll look at Montreal. Montreal is going to be a fun one. We got a couple Montreal and Toronto games in March by the looks of it. So maybe we'll get to one of those today. Do we have a Toronto game? We do have a Toronto game coming up. So we're going to simulate the next three, highlight this Toronto game, see if it goes well. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. So, well, Gunler's out. Okay. Oh no, he's back. Never mind. So, game against Nashville is a 4-1 win. That's good. 2-1 loss against the Blackhawks, though. That's not spectacular. I want to hear what you guys think about guys like, you know, Connor Bedard. Should we be looking to potentially add him to this team if we get a chance? I think with Unstoppable Force and Schneip and some you know, traits like that, he would be a fantastic player to add to this team, although we probably don't really need the centers. Um, and then a guy like Byron Brewer, I would really like to go out and get a 6'3", 208. Uh, probably defensive defenseman, but, you know, could potentially be a two-way as well. Heavy slap shot, shutdown ability, size and strength. I, I just like how he looks. He's got bouncer, true silence, and ice pack. So, yeah, there's some there's some guys I'm interested in there as well for this draft coming up, but I want to hear your guys' comments below. What, what do you think? Who do you think we should go after? Okay, simulating up now to the New Jersey game, and we win that one 3-2. to two. Okay, so we're at a 14-10-3 record now heading into this Toronto game. Toronto is, without a doubt, sitting ahead of us at the moment um, with a 16-8-0 record. Um, they are exactly one point ahead of us, but they've got three games in hand too, so that's not great. So let's start simulating this game, see if it goes well, see if we need to potentially jump in and help out in the third period, or what's going to happen. So first period, 2 nothing Quebec lead, that's what we like to see. All right, uh, Phil Kessel gets on the board, and then Shane Wright makes it a 2 nothing game. 9-8 on shots for the Nordiques after the first. Second period, it's a 2-1 game as Austin Matthews gets on the board, and 25-17 heading into the third. Let's just slow sim to see how this goes. Power play for the Nordiques. 
Does it convert? No, we had five on three opportunity there for a minute too. Doesn't go, and then John Tavares ties it up. Ooh, okay. Now another chance. Pavelski is going to get a goal for the Nordiques. 31 to 24 in shots heading into the final half of the third period. Shots at both ends here. Lots of chances. And is Toronto going to be able to get the game-saving goal here? And they are not with two seconds left, and the Nordiques take that one. So a very close 3-2 game. Um, the Nordiques just barely get out of that one with a win. Joe Pavelski going to have the two points and the plus two for the win. That's what we like to see from our guys. And uh, yeah, that is a clutch performance from Pavelski. So moving on now, the Nordiques move up in the standings a little bit. Obviously, we've got more games played than everybody except for the Senators, who have done extremely well up to this point as well. So let's jump back onto the calendar and see how this upcoming month or so of games goes. So we're going to simulate right up to the Ottawa game here, which we will highlight next. And, well, let's see how uh, the Nordiques do for the remainder of December and then heading into January. So, uh, again, some trade offers. I don't think we want to make those trades, but we win the next game there against Detroit in just a one nothing victory, so that's close. Uh, might end up shutting off um, player conversations as this is beginning to get annoying. So... 5-3 win against the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. That's a big win, and then we lose 5-2 to the Oilers. And the Oilers are good this season, no question. Uh, we do then, ooh, we lose Shane Wright to an injured foot. Um, so that's not good. We'll replace him for now. But um, we win that next game against Anaheim and then lose to the Canucks 5-3. Okay, so Jonathan Bernier is available. Um... See, we could go out and get him. I don't know if we necessarily want to. That's probably not a player to pursue for four million against the salary cap. And we lose Clayton Keller to a mild concussion too. Five to one loss. Ouch. Okay. So Keller is back from injury apparently. Okay. It's kind of destroyed our chemistry by uh, having players out and injured. So. Keller's immediately back after that. Um, okay. A bit of a strange injury there for Keller. He's out for like one day with a concussion. Uh, but we do end up beating the New Jersey Devils 5-1 to one there as well, I believe. So this line's now got a plus 5. Okay. I don't know why it wasn't a plus 5 before. Oh, it's Phil Kessel. That's why. So that's the difference. You guys can see by adding adding in Kessel's close quarters, it all of a sudden, and Pugliarvi's sh snipe too, um, that bumps up the line chemistry. So that's awesome to see. Um, and I wonder if we moved Barrett Hayden around, would that improve anything? Nope. No, it would not. Um, but Soderstrom, we're seeing a plus five there now, which I don't remember seeing before. I thought that was only a plus three, so again, I think that is the X-Factor. So, um, let's see how this next game against Washington goes, as the Nordiques are now 19-13-3. Uh, we lose another Tucson player to injury, but we win 4-3 against the Capitals in a close contest there. Okay. Heading into the game against Tampa, and I don't know if that was a win or not. Oh, we lose Vanasek. Oh, that's not great. Okay. I think we want to move Carter, or, yeah, Carter Hutton up. That would make the biggest difference here, most likely. So yeah, let's put Hutton in as a backup, and, and then Coronar is out, so we got to put Tendek in. Okay. All right, so, you know, some injury struggles that happens, and we lose 5-1 to one against, ooh, 5-1 against Columbus, then 4-2 against 
um, against Vegas. So that's not spectacular. But we now take on the, I believe, first place Ottawa Senators, unless another team is somehow ahead of them, which doesn't look like. 56 points to is quite literally first place in the NHL. Pavelski leads our team with 31 points in 39 games. Um, and we got some maintenance we got to do. So for maintenance, let's uh, let's upgrade the parking lot. May as well. It's probably not a bad idea. We do have to upgrade the club seats eventually this season, or uh, owner's not going to be too happy. So. Now that that is set up, um, let's go take a look at Ottawa's lines because I don't know exactly why they're so, so good this season, but they are. So, Ottawa. There we go. Oh, yeah. Tim Stutzla is a, an 89 overall. That uh, probably makes a pretty big difference. Um, Thomas Shabbat's an 89 overall as well. Okay, yeah, they got a, they've got a pretty solid group of players here. There's no question that these are a bunch of good guys. Um, all on this team, and ooh, Ottawa's got Shane Pinto there as well. Okay. Okay, so yeah, no surprise that this Ottawa team is decent. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think a team like like Edmonton or somebody else like that is probably better with their overall lineup look. Yeah, like look at this. Okay. Um, no doubt that some teams have better rosters than Ottawa, but nobody's playing better than them right now. So let's see if we can take on the number one currently President's Trophy placed um, Ottawa Senators. They've only lost 13 games all season. We've lost 18. So. Here we go. Simulation begins, and first period is a 2-1 to lead for Ottawa. Clayton Keller opens the scoring, but then Connor Brown and Thomas Shabbat change the plans there. Ottawa shoots us 12-10 to in the first, and not a spectacular first period for Quebec. Second period, it's a 2-2 game. Letang ties it up here, 21-18 to on shots after the second, and this is one that we are going to go in and try to make a difference on here, so... Um, you know, let's wear our, our alternates, see how those look. And yeah, we'll go from there. So here we go. For whatever reason, Ottawa is um, somehow lower rated than us, which doesn't exactly make sense to me. And we are playing on Superstar here too. Ooh, Tim Stutzlow, that's a great chance. Okay. All right, here we go. Players are moving up. I Again, I just dislike how the jersey numbers look. Good turn, Morgan Riley out to Chitrin. He's going to fire Matt Murray. Going to hold on for that. Okay. Current league standing. Senators are in first. We're in 12th, so not in a terrible spot. But there's also a lot of good teams in the Atlantic this year. So Wright loses that faceoff. Going to go up to Connor Brown over to Brady Kachuk. Oh, boy. Okay, good save by Chitrin there in the last second. Here comes Shane Wright down the boards. He's going to cut into the middle. Fires up high. That's a great chance for Wright, but he doesn't bury it. Now Josh Norris coming down the other way over to Connor Brown. He's cut off there. Chitrin's going to wrap this one around the boards to Riley, who's going to take off. He's got space. Morgan Riley cutting to the net. Great chance. Keller couldn't bury it. Oh. Now Tomas Hurdle, that's going to get bumped off and back down to Truba. 
Now Colin White picking the puck up. That's turned over right up the middle. Chitrin walks in and fires off the glove. Good chance. Good stick lift by Pulley RV too. Okay, Latang almost makes the play there, but Giroux picks it up. Claude Giroux gets laid out there. I don't know who threw that hit. That was a nasty one though. Now Latang getting bumped. He's gonna walk into the slot. Great chance, better save. Pass over to Hurdle, Tamash Hurdle. Bumped off by Latang once. White picks it back up. That's a loose puck, but Hutton's gonna hold on. And what is going on here? That's such a bad pass. Oh my goodness, should have been a goal. Latang gonna get this one up to Stahl. Eric Stahl cuts in. What a deke, Eric Stahl. Oh, just missed it. Now Clayton Keller picks this one up. Walks into the slot. Murray, another save. Oh my goodness, Matt Murray is playing absolutely phenomenal today. Considering that we're coming at the Senators boat as hard as we can. Murray's standing on his head. So... Face off now in the offensive end. Barrett Hayden's going to lose this one. Yep, he loses it to Fermentin. And Fermentin down the boards. He's going to get bumped off. Now Soderstrom plays it up to Blay. Sammy Blay cuts around looking to make a pass. Doesn't quite hit Hayden on that one. Now Batherson going to send it up to Delzato. I don't know why we're sitting so far back. It's a good stick though by Latang. He's going to take off going the other way. Chris Letang down the boards, cuts back. Looking for a pass, finds Galchenyuk who gets bumped. And now Mikheyev picks it up the middle. Oh my gosh, that's a great pass to Delzato. How did that not go in? Probably should have been a goal there. It was a good chance. Now it's picked up by Galchenyuk who's fresh. And he gets poke checked three times, but ends up getting the puck straight into Murray's glove there. Okay. So offensive chance now for the Nordiques, and we're going to see a face off for Patrick go back. Stetcher over to Thorson. He tees one up, nails a guy with that shot. And Mikhaev's going to pick it up. Dodges two players. Good stick by Thorson as he cuts that one off along the boards. Ricard Thorson walks in, shoots. Great chance, better save. All right, face off now. Going to go back to Stutzla's right, loses that one. First lines are out again here. Connor Brown gets poked by Chitrin once and then gets separated from the puck. Okay, Kachuk, yeah, you just keep keep battling away there. All right, Shane Wright cuts in. Oh, my goodness, he got laid out on that play too. We got a penalty for that hit. It was, it was the exact same open ice hit that just happened to Shane Wright and Pavelski's getting a penalty for it. Okay. All right, so here we go. Now we get the opportunity to try and kill off a power play here for the Senators with just four minutes left. Face off for Wright, going to go back. Morgan Riley spinning away from his guy. Good chance there. Eric Stahl, good defense. Barrett Hayton couldn't get around Shabbat with the spin move there. Norris now separated from the puck. We're going to send this one right up. Nolan Patrick's in all alone. Could not bury it though. Oh my goodness, that was a fantastic chance. Now Mikheyev walks in, somehow walks right through. Morgan Riley shuts it down at the last second. Oh, chance in front. How is that not goalie interference? Okay. All right, that's how this is going to go. So we give up the power play goal. And Ottawa proves that they're the better team here. So not a lot of time left, and uh, well, this is going to be tough. Faceoff going to go back to Giroux. 
Now Latang cutting in, looking to make a play. Centering pass for Giroud. That thing's loose still. Tomash Hurdle wins that battle along the boards. And Colin White gives it up there. Now Latang cutting through. Good chance. Oh, a swing and a miss right in front of the net there. Chris Latang firing through traffic. Big opportunities. Pulley RV, great play as well. Latang again looking to make a play. Nothing there. We're going to pull the goalie. Set up here. Bad pass. That's not what we want to see right now. Good forecheck. Latang out in front. Too much traffic to really do anything there. And Truba's going to walk in. And yeah, there you go. So. Ottawa takes this one 4 to 2 which is unfortunate since we outshot them 32 to 25. But that's how it goes. So that one stings and Ottawa proves to be the better team in that matchup. So advancing now after doing a bunch of scouting off camera and we're going to go all the way up to which game are we even going to? It's going to be Ottawa again, I believe, and then we just go through a frenzy of games that will probably be highlighted more so in the next episode. We play Montreal twice, three times, sorry, um, and then Toronto and Ottawa again, all in a frenzy of like a month. So now we simulate and essentially determine how well this Nordiques team is going to do. So advancing, we lose 4 3 to the. Uh, to the Dallas Stars there, and then a bunch more losses to LA and Colorado as well. So the Nordiques are out of a playoff spot right now. But they do get a win against the uh, Winnipeg Jets. And then they win another one against the Islanders as well, 6-4, to four, and then a shootout loss there against Philly. So honestly, we're not doing terrible, but... This team could be doing a lot better still, considering the players we have. And, well, you know, the draft class looks pretty intriguing right now, too. But at the same time, the team still actually got to perform if we're going to make the playoffs. If we miss it, we've given away our first round pick this year. So, game against Calgary. We get Vidic Vanasek back, so that's good. That will, uh, that will slightly improve how our team plays. Considering that Carter Hutton only won one out of seven games, it's probably good that he's sitting on the bench at this point, although we did just lose to Calgary. We take on Florida and win that one 4 nothing. Okay. So now we just got to keep building on this, and we do win another game against the Islanders there too, 3-2. to two. That's good. So we got to be sitting just outside a wild card spot right now against yeah the Panthers there. So this is a big game coming up as we do beat Nashville too, and Florida is going to be a four to two win. That's huge. Okay, up against Carolina we win seven five. We're on a four game win streak now, and then we blow it to Buffalo. So go figure. That's usually how it goes, and we do have an injury there, but. Um, Ricard Thorson's back in the lineup. He's ready to play. So hopefully he can start making an impact here. Um, and not too much else to really report or improve throughout the lineup here. Looks like shutdown is the big one for Soderstrom. Same with... Um, Chitrin as far as what they're contributing to the lineup, but um, let's see, game against Anaheim coming up here, and are we going to beat the Ducks, or no, we're not, 2-1 to one loss, ouch, and now we're right on that, uh, that border again, we do see a victory against the New Jersey Devils, so another, okay, another win against Vancouver, looking really good overall for the season now, um, Florida offers a trade, we're going to reject that, but the Panthers do move ahead of us there by winning another game. Um, against Buffalo, we lose, so we're out of the wild card spot. But the Atlantic is also a tough division right now, too. Against Columbus, that's an 8-5 victory. Okay. Um, 
And St. Louis we lose as well. Oof, okay. That's not great. So heading into the trade deadline, let's just, let's see what's available, what's on the block, but can't say we're actually going to be making any moves here. Patrick Kane's available. Oh my goodness. That is a top end player without a doubt. I just don't see us going out and getting Patty Kane though, even though he's 92 overall. Just doesn't make a lot of sense. Njelkovic is available. He's only 3 million on Detroit. Okay. Um... Outside of the top 10, not a whole lot. I don't think we're actually going to be making any trades here, but... Yeah, yeah, I just don't see the need to really make trades. Um, we're going to let the Nordiques run their course this season, um, even if we don't finish off the whole season here, but we'll see how well they can do. Why are you scratching that, Murray? That doesn't make sense. Okay, um, we don't need a $6 million goalie, but Murray is scratched heading into this next game against Ottawa as we take them on, but um, a bit questionable as to what Ottawa's doing here exactly, too. Um, we are definitely not in a great spot, as uh, the Lightning are also out of the playoffs. Oh my goodness, okay. The Hurricanes and Golden Knights are battling it out for the top spot in the league, and, well, unfortunately, the Nordiques have kind of dropped the ball here, considering the quality and caliber of the team, but advancing now, we go up 3-1 in the first period against Ottawa, so two goals from Keller and one from Pavelski, the first line's clicking, uh, Josh Norris gets the lone goal for Ottawa, second period, it's a 5-1 game. And I think we've got this one in the bag, but who knows? Power play for the Nordiques doesn't convert. And, well, Ottawa's out shooting us, but does that really matter if we're beating them by this much? I don't think it really does. We get another power play goal there from Claude Giroux. Power play for Ottawa does not convert. Okay. Um, interesting. They do finally get a power play goal on their next power play there, but too little too late as the Nordiques take that one 6-2. to two. As uh, they win a big one, Clayton Keller with three points, Pavelski with two. That's how I expect this team to perform against weaker opponents, but that's the thing is our quote-unquote weaker opponents always perform really well, so... Um, Let's see if we can beat Montreal in the first Battle of Quebec matchup that we're going to see. And, well, first period is a 1-1 to -one game as Barrett Hayden opens the scoring and then Nick Suzuki ties it up 14-8 to -eight after the first in shots for Quebec. Second period, it is a 1-1 one -one game still. So heading into the third, here we go. Um... We're going to go with the home jerseys here, and, well, we'll see what happens. As Montreal and Quebec take on each other in the third period here for the Battle of Quebec. All right, so here we go. Game is underway. Faceoff's going to go back to the Nordiques, and, well, let's see what Quebec can do. So Shane Wright going to go dodging Suzuki here. Wow, Montreal's really playing a tight defense. Okay. Pass to Riley. Morgan Riley's shot gets through, but Jake Allen makes the save. So Carey Price isn't even playing in this game, funny enough. Um, and it's a 1-1 game. You think this... I mean, I guess Montreal doesn't view us as a very important rival or threat. But uh, we'll see if that changes here in a bit. So Toffoli now coming down the boards. Chitrin lays him out. Was a big hit. Terrible pass, though. 
Suzuki picks that one off. Clayton Keller walking down. Tries to do a loose puck. He can't get away from his guy there. Suzuki now looking to make a play. He's going to dump it. Morgan Riley plays it around the boards to right. Shane Wright gives it away right in the middle. That's not where we want to lose the puck. But Oh, goodness. Somebody make a break. Now Morgan Riley enters the zone, walks in, tees one up high on the short side, and a good save by Allen. Caulfield avoiding checks, looking to make a play. Sends it up to Suzuki. Suzuki gets past one guy. Uh, he's checked by Kessel at the last second. Holy Anderson, take a penalty already, buddy. So now here comes Phil Kessel down the wall. He's going to shoot. Good chance. Better save. Chicharin fights off one guy. He walks in and fires and a good save by Allen again. Now Edmondson gets the pass up to Drewen. That one's taken off his stick. Christian Dvorak going down the wing. Tries to find Drewen. He does. Drewen centering. Chicharin picks that off. Jeff Petrie gets absolutely laid out on that play by Eric Stoll. Now we send it up to Barrett Hayton. He's going to walk in. Shoots through traffic and off the post. Great chance. Soderstrom now to Latang. He fires and Allen again makes the save. Jake Allen playing an absolutely amazing game today. Dumpin's going to go to Latang. Latang's going to hit Hayton up the wall again. He's moving. Barrett Hayton driving the net. He takes it right into Allen. That's a good save. Edmondson up to Drewan over to Maroon. Patrick Maroon walking in all by himself immediately gets poked by Latang. That was kind of funny to watch. Eric Stahl picked off there over to Latang. Latang makes a really bad drop pass. And a sec over to Soderstrom. Soderstrom dodges the check. Good chances here. Patrick trying to go through traffic. Can't find it. Pass goes up to Maroon. That was almost right up the middle. Now Ricard Thorson walks in. Shoots. Good chance. Better save again. Kalchenyuk now on the four check, almost picks it off. Thorison does pick it off. That should have been a penalty, maybe, but. Here we go. Joel Pavelski walks in. Nice deke pass right out in front to Stetcher. Oh my goodness, that should have been a goal. Now Caulfield weaving his way through traffic. Dvorak gets knocked off the puck. Larson up to Nolan Patrick. Patrick's going to play it off the boards. Pavelski just loses that battle. Now Anderson down the wing. Tries to make the deep. Can't do it. And Clayton Keller takes off here on the zone move. Okay. Savard makes a good play though. Hoffman. Gets pinched off by Pavelski. Over to Riley, back to Kessel. Phil Kessel looking to walk in. Finds Morgan Riley. He's going to tee one up. Good chance. Better save. So overall, you know, 32 points on the season for Chetra, and he's playing quite well, but... At the same time, you know, the team's not quite where we want them to be. Chicharin now going to fire through traffic. That was on the backhand, though. Interesting shot choice. Now Hoffman coming down the wing. He's going to get bombarded with poke checks. We're down to the final minute now. Kessel over to Suzuki. Oh my goodness, Suzuki should have scored on that one. Now up to Chicharin. Jakob Chitrin doesn't get it free, but Kessel does. 
Now Giroux walking in, cuts back to Chitrin. He's going to walk the line, send it to Giroux. Giroux comes walking up the middle. He gets poked. Good stick lift, loose puck, and they're going to go the other way. Suzuki getting bumped off the puck, finds Savard right in the slot. That's picked off by Pugliarvi out of all players. Now Jesse Pugliarvi. Tries to send it to Kessel, doesn't find him. Phil Kessel right out in front. Allen holds on to it. Now Joseph walking in. Can't find a play. He gets bumped there, and that is it for the regulation frame of the third period. And, well, we're headed to overtime in the first ever Battle of Quebec here in this series. So, well, 10-shot difference heading into the over time let's see what happens and uh you know one shot wins it all so Giroux, Pavelski and Latang out first Petrie's gonna get the puck off the draw that's turned over and this is a good opportunity for Pavelski pass over to Giroux he wasn't skating what are you doing Claude Latang absolutely throws the body on that play Foley separates the guy from the puck. And here we go. Letang's moving. Chris Letang cuts forehand, backhand. Great chance. Can't find anybody. Pavelski looking to make a play. We're going to hold on to this. Go for a line change. Oh my goodness. Van a sec. Don't hold that. Oh my goodness. That was bad. <laughs> All right, well, we got forward line two out, which probably isn't, like, we don't want Shane Wright taking the face-off necessarily because his face-offs are kind of bad, but, well, let's see. He does win it, of course. Every time I chirp his face-offs, he wins one. All right, Clayton Keller holding on. It gets the two-on-one triggered. Oh, you got to be kidding me, Dvorak. You just made that play. Here comes Shane Wright. Are you going to lay my guy out like that, really? Oh, that's a nice pass to Keller. Clayton Keller walking in just misses the chance. Clayton Keller walks in. Oh, can't quite make the play. Chitrin right out in front to Keller again. Oh, man. Great opportunities here. Clayton Keller looking for the pass. Finds it out in front, but that doesn't convert. How did that stay out? Jeff Petrie getting bumped off the puck now. Keller's going to wrap this one around to Shane Wright, who is tired, but still has a little bit in him. Avoids the check of Hoffman there. Shane Wright cuts back in. Fires. Good opportunity. Clayton Keller separating guy from Puck. Can't do it, though. Hoffman comes walking in. He gets bumped outside. Suzuki right in front. And Suzuki wins it. Oh, great battle. And a better win there for the Canadiens as... Quebec drops it in overtime. A long shift for the second line results in a Montreal goal. In the extra time frame, the only shot they got in overtime, and it's in the net. So that one stings, but that's how it goes sometimes, especially when you're playing against better teams in the standings. So that's where we're going to wrap it up for this one. I want to hear what you guys think about Connor Bedard and different players that could potentially impact this team through the draft in the future and really what we should try be trying to focus on in the upcoming episode as far as do we try to make the playoffs because we're just out of a wild card spot at the moment and we still have about 10 games left so next episode could potentially feature a lot of tight games against toronto montreal and ottawa or i don't know let me know what you guys want to see for episode five but that's what we're going to call it for this one so if you enjoyed make sure to go down below drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit 
the notification bell to never miss these uploads. And of course, drop your comments in the comment box below. But that's going to be it for me, and until next time.